see another easy plane path coming down from that top right portion of the play zone. How often do we see FaZe in 14th place through three games? Uh, I gotta Four say games. this is probably our first. Uh, we never really see this happen. I'm kind of curious to see how we're gonna see this progress through. We've seen a lot of very polite flame paths coming through today. Nothing too terribly harsh. Going pretty much through the center of the map, making everything you could potentially want available. Maybe it's kind of hard if you really wanted to go over towards the Milta area, or if you wanted to stretch towards Georgia Pool. Nothing too terribly crazy here, though. Absolutely, and looking at Envious, that 20 kill game propelling mm -hmm. them into that top three position. That is going to be an absolute boon for them. A team we expected to do well. Uh, I suppose that half of uh, NVS is flying high off their previous tournament, but for Ghost Gaming, not looking quite the same. It almost starts to become a question with Envy's last performance and Ghost's last couple of performances in these rounds. What really got them to PGI Berlin? Uh, was it the Envy side or was it the Ghost side? Because I think that that's starting to become a little bit more of a telling story as we move through these rounds. Envy's really performing inside of this, but Envy didn't manage to even make it into the finals right. to actually try to qualify for Berlin. So I don't know. It's been a little bit back and forth between these two. A talented and, I mean, one of the most veteran teams, one of the oldest rosters between them and FaZe, I believe Envious has, I mean, their former high ground. These are guys that have been playing as long as I can remember covering this game. And, and really, I suppose the question stands for the North American scene. We've seen Ghost Gaming with you know, two of the best fraggers in North America added to their roster. Is it time for a consolidation? I kind of see that. We've seen a lot of really strong performing players across North America. The one good thing that EU does that is so much better than North America is they're great at kind of identifying talent and building these mega super teams that are just so hard to stop. Meanwhile, North America is a lot more like, let's play with my friends, let's be right. a lot more cordial. And I think that we're starting to see that point where people are finally going, no, I want to be on the winning team. I love you guys, but it's about time to try to make something a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and let's see what happens with that. And I think that after PGI, after Berlin, we're definitely going to see a lot of roster switch. I mean, we're already we've starting already, to see yeah, it. Yeah, we've started seeing it, yeah, absolutely. And really, that's to be expected. It happens in all esports. This one is not to be excluded. Alliance has done uh, Really, there's been a lot of roster swaps. And, and for the North American scene, if you were to pick your five, if you were going to if you were gonna send one team to be the champion of North America, who would it be? Ooh, that's a hard question. I mean, I would have to say that Ghost has been known for their performance while they're not having necessarily the strongest time around. But one of the most consistently performing teams, Tempo Storm. Yeah. I think that that might be my pick because, man, they had their own revolutionized strat where they just drop over in Gakka. We refer to it as the Tempo uh, drop or the trash drop where everybody separates out. They each get a couple of buildings and then they like rejoin as quickly as they can. Now, the downside with Tempo strategy is when they get a circle like this because that means that all these guys are now going to start making their way inside the circle. All these other teams could potentially catch them as they're trying to regroup. No doubt. And really... For, for my, I guess I'm going to answer my own question, uh, but as far as my, I think my five, Zampa had a tough time after the North American qualifiers. Questioned what the direction of the team was going to be, what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. All these guys are friends, mm -hmm. but completely uh, making friendships irrelevant, I would say that I would like to see Zampa, Caden, uh, Hypoc, and I, I think Check Shooter as well on, on a squad together. I think that would be a dominating team. Hypoc has the leadership capability, and the fragging ability speaks for itself on that squad. But, oh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, at this stage, they are still playing as a as a unit. And for now, the curtains have not drawn. So for, uh, for Envious, what do you need to do to, to bounce off that last game success? Keep it going. I think that you just need to capitalize on what got you there. We saw them with great rotations, playing strong positions. We know they have amazing shooters. Let them go to town. Let them kill everybody around them like we saw in the last round. Don't play this hide-and-go-seek game inside of buildings. Go find a strong terrain point, stand on top of it, and just murder anybody that drives by you. So looking at this initial circle, we are going to see teams headed towards that northern George area. This is now FlyQuest Circle. They find themselves completely by themselves in the Georgia Pole region. For FlyQuest, a team that has struggled, now playing with Puneji, or sorry, excuse me, Punage, who has had a bit of a tough time from, a, from an age standpoint. It's not, he can't really help <laughs> yes, it being true. young, but he's a very talented player. And now, what do they need to do to try and shine here? They have the circle. What comes next?
Well, I think it's just about making sure that you move into a strong position, make something out of it. Don't necessarily just hunker down inside of Georgia Coal itself. Maybe move over to one of the points because a big part of this map is that river that runs right through the middle of Absolutely. the circle. That means that there's going to be a lot of neat little points that you can hold, all these little mini bridge camps. The circle is either going to go north or south, and if you can get to a point to hold that, the guys that go north will have to come down to you if it's a southern circle. The guys in the south will have to pass by you if it's a northern circle. You can net a lot of free kills, tear apart teams that are transitioning just a little bit late but you have to get into that point to do it. And this is FlyQuest's time. They finally have Hoonage with them. This is where they finally have their full roster. Because, I mean, it was the running joke, like you were saying, about how long is it going to be before Hoonage can actually play inside of an event because he's 16, almost everything, all the events were 18. Everybody was saying, what, it was like 18 months before he would be 18 years old. So he was just this great star player that just never got a chance to shine. So looking at the way that they have set themselves up, in this George area, Andy Pyro going for the crate in the early game. Hopefully ends better this time than yeah, it did last yeah. time. He's got support. Look, other and guys are coming up. They're good. They got his yeah, yeah, Absolutely. So Andy now grabbing that and getting out of there. So that is going to be a huge pickup for them, grabbing that sniper rifle, getting in this game. And, and for Andy Pyro, staying alive. I mean, obviously staying alive in this game is important for everybody. You yeah, can't do anything when you're dead. But it seems that when Method loses Andy, loses that high firepower, they kind of get lost a little bit. I would say that. I would, he's kind of the heart and soul of that team. He's not always necessarily the shot caller. I know he used to be that role. But really, he, they're like, he's the confidence in the team. He's like, come on, guys, we can do this. Let's go. Let's let's get in these positions. Let's take the shots. Let's be brave. You can see they're moving to Everest in a circle such as that. They're getting up on the highest point because they want to be able to shoot down at anybody. The problem with it is, again, everybody can see them. Whenever you get one of these positions, all these teams that are getting in these low ground spots, they can take those pot shots back up at you. So it becomes a battle of who's got the better aim, who's got the better scopes. And Dippo Storm cutting out of here. They're going to try to, looks like they're going to hold that area right around the foothills, and looks like everybody's starting to regroup from them. Cloud9 already in a strong position, and you're starting to see it break down. Who's going north? Who's going south? Dignitas right. with a light transition over here. Pot shots going back and forth between Cloud9 and Method direct time. Something these guys need to consider, you mentioned the river once already. It is splitting the play zone nearly in half. Teams have to bank. They don't want to rotate more than they need to. Mm -hmm. Do you go north of the river? Do you go south? Right now, it's a 50-50 shot, but if it hard shifts south or north, that's an extra rotation across a body of water, making things much more difficult. And if you see a team like Optic holding on to a very important choke point around that Georgia Pole area, Energy has vision as well. Really, for a team to hold that spot is really going to dictate the flow of the game. What I find surprising is the amount of teams that are opting into the north. We saw that there were really only Dignitas that was in the northern part of the circle. They always love to go Severny. That's like their home. That's where they like to drop at. And so many teams are like, I don't want to have to cross this, so I'm going to opt into the northern side. We can right. see Energy's already up there. Team Gates is up there. We've got Dignitas in their position. Optics already shifted over. And a lot of people kind of bunkering down around that Everest area. Remember, we are with competitive circles. So about circle four, we're going to hard shift away from water. Right. So playing along those edge areas in Georgia Pool, you know, is not necessarily the best idea. At least play on the edges of it. And again, another amazing crate. So this is going to be potentially the path of Turtle and the rest of Ghost in transition in one vehicle. Something that is a bit of a risk uh, considering yeah. their position here. If you're in one vehicle, you have your whole squad with you. One, one good wrong AK. move. One good AK spray. One That's wrong it. move, and that is a complete team wipe. You can see they are recognized that they're going to split onto the motorcycle here, just try and uh, reduce the odds of getting absolutely dominated here. But I don't know if they're going to be able to spot that crazy Space Station Gaming also in rotation. All these teams coming out of the south are going to be meeting Tempo Storm, who Still surprise, surprise, uh, is, in there, is in their loot set, uh, set up here oh, all along the Gagna region. With a nice shot from on top of Everest, it does get a little bit of damage onto a, a team member, gets Poonage down. We talked about how important he is for FlyQuest. Losing that member very early is very important. So with Method, uh, something I was just considering, they seem to take the high ground so often, but they don't leave themselves on. They did find the crate, so McCoy going to be the one first man into the pool, and he will grab that, uh, that gear there, Profi there to share. Poonage is stuck out by himself. It, and it looks like Optic now getting involved. Andy Pyro going down early once again. This is starting to be a reoccurring story. Andy gets into these aggressive positions. Optic was just sitting there waiting for him. Pounces, gets the kill. He is going to slowly bleed out. They already popped him a couple of times, unless somebody wants to come over there and take the shots. But nope, nobody's can't, around it. can't look at it. He can't yeah. stand to see just, Andy go down again. And Boone is, is stuck. I, I think that there's nothing really to be done for him. There's just too much risk. But Sharky looks like he is going to be the rescue mission coming in. You can see the sat. Okay, we get it. Oh, Thank you. Thank oh, you. I, it's, it's <laughs> All right. It's just We're sad. not afraid to look at Andy's corpse. But he is down.
down, and now it's all about Sharky trying to grab Poonage. Will he be able to get this res? The rest of Method high atop the Georgia Pole Mountain looking down on them. And goodbye tires on your vehicle. This is a commitment. You can tell right now FlyQuest is like, we need Poonage. We need him to be alive. Pot shot's now coming through. Remember, they did lose the tire. This vehicle is going to be very slow to accelerate, going to be hard to control. And whenever it does cut out and they try to make that push, you know they're probably going to go for that angle, which is where Optic is waiting. So Are they I... retreating back out? No, they're just going to push oh, right back through. Tire More goes. tires going through. Good driving to kind of nice steady this too. through and makes it straight back into crates. That's well, yeah. survival rescue right there. He did it. So another successful rescue from FlyQuest. Poonage will live to see another day having to lick his wounds a little bit in the crates. But speaking of method, once again, I know they've made a change up recently. Andy Pyro used to also carry the in-game leader role as well. That has shifted to HC. You have to wonder, now that Andy has been free to do his own thing, is he playing within the team concept? Is he listening to the calls? He was way by himself. What is he doing out on that bridge? Well, we're starting to see this be a little bit more common, where people will separate out. Usually you have like this hard flanker, the hard gunner. You know, you got three people that stick together, and then like somebody that kind of goes for a scouting position or goes to hold. Usually you're a more aggressive player that's like, sure, I can win a 1v3, let me drive out there. I'm kind of surprised in his position, given the fact that they already had control over Everest, and it seems like that's a place that Method would really enjoy to play They're at. They're in the center. Why was he moving? Yeah, why I don't was he leaving? That exactly. Either. So, and uh, you can see Space Station Gaming grabbing onto another good position here. Totality getting involved with energy. Nerf is down and out very quickly. Taro, actually, that's Los HD picking up the kill. Totality having an initial decent start, but a team that has struggled with consistency in the past. A talented roster, a lot of expectations as they rose through the online leagues hasn't necessarily translated into a ton of success from a, uh, I mean, they've, they've been making to land, which is, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the first step, as we will see that hard shift to going the all the way north. Now, pull back the map again, because we're just now getting Envy Poor and phase. FaZe make their way oh into the circle. God. They're like, we did it, guys. At least one of us inside, not taking blue damage. Mixie's still on the outside, too, and now they have to do a huge rotate. I mean, they're, they're getting practice, to, at least. <laughs> they need to essentially drive by Yasnaya. That's the only safe way to go. We can see Yimti does get rewarded for it, though, coming out with a lot of nice loot. There's there. a lot of stuff in that crate. Yeah. So the AWM, the 8X, all the level three gear, and even the ghillie suit as a bonus. But ghillie suits don't help you in rotations. They are going to have to make it across the river and really hopefully try and avoid the pressure they've been seeing all through this initial portion of the tournament. And here's two different strategies kind of coming in conflict with each other. You can see that totality. They love to play aggressive. Gates, they like to be a lot more passive during the mid game. And look at this, Esco under a lot of pressure right now. The guys from Gates, they just want to retreat back, but you don't retreat from totality. They will follow you for as long as they can because they want every kill they can find. And that has been totality's downfall in the past as well. An aggressive team, an extremely talented team, but they do find themselves in these edge fights. But to be fair, they're in the circle this time around. Team Gates not going to get away unscathed. You can see Purdy taking those long shots with the 3x scope. And really, I don't think Silo can get away from this at this stage. The utility is down. More is coming. Team Gates, do you just kind of, what do you do here? You try to provide at least some form of cover fire. You think that Mossy would at least play the hill, take a couple of pot shots back out. Silo's just going to make a run for it. You can see he's just trying to run up the side. It's not working for him. He just gets dropped by Taro. They're going to go ahead and get that kill, finish it off. And I think the rest of Gates has just got to run at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's nothing really for them to do. And meanwhile, can... look at this fly quest popping off over here. We got Steezy making a nice push. Two kills are one kill, one down. There's your second kill. T-Bone's like, nope, I don't want to have yeah, anything have to do to with this. We're out. Two downs, nothing to really be defended. They don't have the information to deal with that. Alliance, a team I expected, they had a decent run the last little while, but so far not really putting together the team cohesion, the fighting. The exodus still continues. As yeah. you can see, Envy's over here. We've got Tempo Storm making their push off over here. Uh, nine there as well. already out in the blue just a little bit further south, that's kind of become their home inside of the circle. They're yeah. just like, ah, we just don't believe in safe zones anymore. We're just going to go ahead and tank it. Meanwhile, Space Station Gaming, we've the seen nautical. this happen several times. They love to be the Navy. <laughs> the nautical route being chosen by Space Station Gaming. That that edge rotation, we see, it was, it was kind of a rare tactic not too long ago, but now more and more teams are adopting that mm -hmm. wide flank all the way outside on the edge of the play zone. You can see three separate teams all from North America, Temple Storm, Cloud9, and Envious, making that push toward the shooting range. I think FaZe might take it one step further, go on the outside of Yasnaya and come in around Severny. I know they like that gas station region, but that is still out for FaZe. They might want to take a coastal area, but 
Looks like Cloud9 landed first and they got the benefit. They are doing the exact same thing that Envy did last time. Look at this position we see them playing inside of. A divot taking over pot shots they can. Envy guys do manage to break away, come around the outside of it. So they're going to do a full retreat, go back down south. Looks like they're trying to find somewhere that they want to push into, but Tempo Storm's holding the angle right next to him. NRG, two-man strong, I think, right now, are holding down a position as well. Vitality does come inside of the Georgia Pool area. FlyQuest hot-footing it across the bridge. If we see Vitality go for a reposition, they might take this bridge and come up right back behind the FlyQuest guys. Vitality is an interesting story for me. I think they, I mean, looking back towards last year, they won IEM Oakland, mm -hmm. the first tournament, back then as AAA. Uh, at this stage... 189 points. Not a lot going on from them. They're trailing FlyQuest. Yeah. They've been in this slump for what seems like forever now. What is happening with Vitality? I don't know. You could just see they used to play with such confidence. They used to play very aggressive. They were very good at the centering strategies that came through. I think it's just more a matter of they just don't feel like themselves anymore. I don't think that necessarily anything's wrong with their shooters. I don't think that anything was wrong with Vitality at core. It just seems almost like it's a mindset issue because these guys yeah. are so great. Like, they were kind of phase before phase was phase. They were such a strong, dominant team back whenever they were against it was always that, It was always they those two so teams. Yeah, yeah, it was always those two teams. Vitality and phase always in the same breath for the longest time. Really, FaZe has pulled ahead, but as of late, struggling, especially today, struggling a little bit in rotation. They have made their way all the way to Severity, having to stop, and Med spending a lot of time in that blue zone. Ooh, two crates dropping right next to right. Yeah, Gates. that's... Uh, I really like the position that Gates is playing, where the, uh, the airplane crash is at. You know, you can kind of play down inside here, bring your vehicles in. You're going to get rewarded for some awesome gear. You're going to have a strong point that you can play around. See how the vehicles are just hidden back down inside of this? You've got so many good areas you can play, and the circle just pops right on top of them. So with this, we can see the guys from Cloud9 are going to be running right by the Tempo Storm guys who are doing a 2-2 split. Envy guys coming through as well. Moody trying to make it over and through this, taking a lot of pot shots. Nowhere for him to go. He's just trying to cycle out onto the side of this. He can't stop. Trying to line up the shots. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, there's just so many people from Tempo Storm spread out around him, but I think he managed to make it out of the gauntlet. Zampa in the wide open position, something he's not afraid to do. Tempo Storm holding the high ground, and as we see Team Gates taking advantage of the crates that were gifted to them. I saw Alliance, I think, crashed their motorcycle. Uh, I oh, don't, don't see a vitality. confirmation. This is a dangerous spot to drive through. A lot of shots wow. coming out, and Shiv does go down. Turns around, follows it. Araxes jump, bounces off of something. Oh, no. He's still somehow, I think that like threw off the spam. So that means the shots are coming through. Shadow's taking a lot of damage off on this. Araxes, I think, manages to make it out. Monkey's like, hey, thanks for scouting, guys. I'm yeah, gonna go no away. doubt. Shiv can't do anything about this, but meanwhile, Space Station Gaming dealing with FlyQuest on the reverse flank as well. Phase still being held out by Cloud9. Totality in transition as well. Mixie trying to make it past. Cloud9 having stopped to take those shots, now playing an interesting role here as Space Station Gaming and looking for that touchdown that made. Be. Oh, oh that's off the branch. Oh, that was shame. such a good throw, too. Vexel still playing this aggro. He's going, okay, Tree, you win that round. I'm going to try this again. A couple of shots come out. Grenade's going to no connect mass. over there. That's going to do a lot of damage. I got to say, Space Station Gaming, they've been playing aggro, and I like it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at the way that they have been playing these games, We've seen, you know what, a funny story about, not funny, but I mean, a long history does Space Station Gaming, this particular squad, have. I met these guys initially in Tennessee at a small event. They weren't even playing, they were playing on a Space Station Gaming banner, but they weren't competing in any leagues. To see them start qualifying for lands, they've had tough showings, but now you start to see that talent on that team. Mm -hmm. They're really stepping up. You can see that they just keep improving game after game. Every lane that they come to, they just perform a little bit stronger. They're always learning. Oh, uh, uh -oh. guys from Totality running right up onto Profi, but he's holding a different angle. So this looks like two different scouts that have crashed around. A couple of bullets come out. Profi's just taking some pot shots going, no, this is mine. Go away. They don't know how many people are here, but it's <laughs> all Profi. Profi is all by himself. The lone sole survivor for Ghost right now. But I got to say, if you're a Ghost fan, this is the guy you want alive. Well, Profi does have a second family in the Ghost Gaming organization, but he is the last man in that family currently. The rest of his squad has been eliminated. Speaking of which, Tempo Storm getting tangled up with Cloud9. That is Riem going down. Moody is across the street as well. Zampa and Dre putting pressure on Cloud9, who uh, looks like they tried to move on foot and it didn't work out for them. Sharp shot. As rest, they're, split, kind of they're, they're very split. They've done this now several times where they'll do a 2 2 split. You can tell that they brought Sharpshot in. He plays a lot closer to how Zampa likes to play. You know, take these raw, str strong pushes, try to get the shots off. Instead, they're breaking into a 2 and 2 strategy so that way they can kind of hold down different areas of the map. 
kind of curious to see if we see this progress through this event and if this is something that they're going to grow and start using a more regular strategy. Meanwhile, we got Steezy over here, and a little bit of duress, kind of hiding out. But we've got the guys from Dignitas taking some pot shots at Vitality on the outside of it. Space Station Gaming still holding their position. FaZe got themselves a little bit of a foothold, but Frolicker kind of stuck outside yeah, the blue. It, there's so many teams that are just kind of holding onto the edge. They want to see what this circle is going to do. You can see Envious, Space Station Gaming, Cloud9, Totality, even FaZe is a little closer to the edge. And we have seen that shift come in now, and we were going to be moving a little bit further to the northeast. This is giving FaZe a bit of an advantage. They have hard cover, and now for all these guys having to transition through these open fields, the Knights in an interesting choke point, but really now it's going to be a mad dash to that Lower right side of the play, or lower left side of the nice play zone. Nice shots coming out from Profi there. He's all by his lonesome, but he is not afraid to take these shots. This is a lot of risk. Keep in mind, there's 14 teams still in this. If Profi goes down, that's going to be a horrible standing from Ghost coming through this, but he is not afraid. He wants to make sure that people, like, fear his location so many pushes up on him. Meanwhile, we've got Method on a move. Knight's been pretty quiet this game, but they've had some pretty strong performances throughout the day so far, too. Optic now getting involved. Knight's playing that choke point. We just talked about that a second ago. Method trying to make it past in their vehicles. Headed right into Sharpshot and Maluk. Method just trying to skirt by. Nothing coming out just yet. Calls coming from Maluk. Likely letting his teammates know that there's people on the way. Zampa getting involved immediately. Dre is there as well. ATN company have to stop at the shack. They have found their way into the zone. Nice and centered, but not a lot of cover to work with. They're in the low ground position just taking the pot shots right now. It's a very dangerous position to play from because now they're caught between two different flanks that could come out from Tempo Storm. They have to essentially live in that shack and pray the circle goes towards them. Meanwhile, Knights coming up and alive. They do see Optic on the outside of this, taking a shot onto it. Texas never afraid to take a shot. This guy wants to look for people. He wants to kill everything around him. Optic trying to grab the crate just ahead. They do get the initial down on the Kramer. He will be finished, or not finished just yet, but down. And Vitality, speaking of which, now getting involved with Space Station. This is going to be Vitality playing three strong. Shiv lost in rotation. Space Station Gaming also down one. Optic having grabbed that crate, have to deal with the Knights. They're looking like they want to hit this low side flank. We've seen this from Valley time mm -hmm. and time again. He's going to play aggressive, spots the dead body. And now it's going to be a flank coming on to Drayden. Nothing happening just yet. Valiant pressing further. Trying to get as, as much information as we can. Trying to make sure that he doesn't want to get into a fight whenever he's in the, he's not in the safe zone yet. Circles are already coming in. So he just wants to get the information. Get the solid flank. Now that they've made it inside the safe zone, they <laughs> might be a little the same bit more thing. tempted. Knights have gone on the flank of their own. They've actually moved a little bit further past. Optic now moving in behind. They're jockeying for position, looking for each other. Nothing happening just yet. Vitality still trying to deal with Space Station Gaming on the low side themselves, or actually getting dangerously close. He will jump across. D-Master takes the initial burst. Nothing landing. Vitality now moving in. Shadow will take him down. And now it's looking like Vitality is going to try and finish this off here. Space Station Gaming a little bit spread. H-Win trying to move away from the outside of these houses. Optic now getting involved. H-Win and the rest of Space Station Gaming in a world of hurt. There's nowhere for him to go. Just H-Win still outside, not inside the safe zone like we were talking about. Blue's coming in now. Nades are starting to crash down around him. D-Master's already bleeding out. All of Space Station's hopes and dreams depend on H-Win right now. And he has to run up a hillside with Vitality on one angle and Optic on another one. Vitality also now losing another one. Monkey does go down. And now Optic and the Knights are getting tangled up. Two teams that have been out maneuvering each other as best as they can. Vitality playing the third party. Monkey desperately calling for help behind the lines there. The blue is closing. Utility going down from Araxi. They're going to try and keep their teammate up here. Wise move, Matcher, maybe. We're going to have to see how this plays out. Lots uh -oh, of shots still coming down. through. High pot connects onto that. Circle starting to make its Not way gonna through. Happen. Monkey's going to go down and out onto it. You can see Hetchwar lines up another shot onto Monkey. Vitality's taking a lot of damage on it. You can see Raxa is already down to about a third of his life, just cowering inside of the smoke. Hypoc taking a couple of shots, hoping that he could try to hit something on this. But you can see they're holding these angles. How many resources does Vitality have left? Can they keep the smoke cover up? Because the next circle has popped. Raxa has to it. run right into Optic. They want it. And really, this is where Optic starts to come alive in their games. They have four up. They've got five kills. They have a decent position. They're well kitted. The nade oh, comes out. This. Baja Waka lines it up. Knows Will exactly it land true? He, he knows exactly where Araxi is. And touchdown. And that is Araxi and the rest of Vitality eliminated as Optic picks up yet another kill and some more loot. Meanwhile, we've got Rappi who does get knocked. Dignitas coming alive on this hillside. Phase off in the distance. They've been very quiet inside of this, but Dignitas trying to make their way down. But they are just running into way too many squads. Look at how many downs are coming out. 
for Dignitas. They're having to try and get this res started right away. Method is wounded down below, one man down. Molman and AC stuck. Optic is not allowing anyone to move in their area of operation, and it's all about Hetror and that long arm. Hypok. Looks like he's going to try and back off playing that rear security for Dignitas. What do you do to get out of this? Well, they have to move. The Circle's already started to encroach on them. They want to get these shots. They want to get the kills. They want to make it hard for Dignitas to reposition. And I got to say, Hetro is lining up some beautiful shots. He's not getting the downs, but he is getting so much damage. They need to start making their way through. Circle is right on their heels. They've got about 20 seconds to push out and make their way into the Circle. Looks like they're going for an aggressive position. Meanwhile, Envy, they've been hearing where Tempo Storm is. They're starting to make their way down. Cloud9 Frolicker goes out, and I think that's all she wrote for Cloud9. Nine. Looks like FlyQuest also being eliminated. Envy still being active. Venerated is down. Zero kills for Envy so far. Sharp shot and the rest of Tempo Storm still maneuvering around them. Looking like they want to try and grab this res, but your boy Dre not allowing any movement just yet. Tempo Storm well aware of Envious is located. Cloud9 and even FaZe now arriving on scene behind Tempo Storm. This is two t two players looking to try and get a decent position. Maluk heard them arrive. He's going on that outside flank. FaZe oh. now having... Does looks like Tempo it? Storm coming down upon them. He's got teammates coming up behind him. The rest of Tempo Storm is reuniting here. They're trying to get some type of information. He Did he see Mexi? Yes, he does. Takes oh, the pot no. shots. Mexi already down to about half-life. Just trying to run back down the hillside. Does manage to Come just on, barely make it to safety. And oh, oh they're grouped up. The they're grouped up. coming through here. They are just flying down oh, this hillside. No. Mexi goes down. This is turning terrible for FaZe under so wow. much pressure. And Tempo Storm just goes nuts. And the exclamation point at the end with the grenade. Tempo Storm eliminating FaZe uh, Clan going down in eighth place. Dignitas also receiving a ton of damage. I'm really liking the way Tempo Storm is playing this game. I love this. Tempo Storm really, again, that 2-2 split really paying off for him. Meanwhile, at the southern area, we've got Gates coming in contact with Envy. We're seeing circles too small now. Everybody's within touching distance of each other. So it's a third-party fight into another third-party fight. So, so for Envious, they are going to have to decide now whether they want to stick with this fight with Team Gates or move to the zone. Tempo Storm does have a line of sight on them. For Baja and Hetror, Optic now with eight kills, still rolling with four strong. Totality has arrived, being forced in by the blue. They have the high ground position, but now it's a matter of time. 45 seconds before the zone starts to close. Everybody's encroaching back and forth. Purdy's got this nice flank onto Baja. He's trying to line up the shots, but Baja is just taking so much damage. Grenade's coming out, knows exactly the tree. Nice throw. He's going to land it. Is it oh, going to little short It's going to be close. Oh, tree wow. does take most of the brunt of the damage, but we can see Terrell gets knocked on the outside of this. Optics are trying to make well. sure to there it around is. it, but nice throw coming out from Purdy, making up for the last one. This is turning really, really bad from the guys from Optic. Look at Team Gates, however. They're on the back end. Hypok has been taken down. It's Mossy picking up an easy kill there. Now that is a boon for uh, for Taro and the rest of Totality. Optic now facing a pinch situation. You can see now, it looks like Optic is going to try and hard commit to this. Valiate holding the reverse end flank, knowing the team gates is behind, but Purdy is now looking for the flank. He does get some damage onto Baja. Baja is now down. There's just one member from Optic alive, and that's Valiate. He's just hiding behind the tree. There's no way he can get to that res. Too many other teams up and around. Still six teams alive. 15 people at this point. We know Team Gates has got the high ground position. We can see Valiate just barely inside the circle. Dignitas did go out a few minutes ago. Two blue damage. Totality does need to make a push up, but we also have so many solo players just kind of hiding out that could just pop up any given moment. Totality lucked out a little bit there with Team Gates coming to pre pressure onto the reverse end of Optic. Now it's only Valiate. Optic going from having four strong and a ton of kills. Now Valiate playing insurance policy, having to stay perfectly still, trying to play for placement. That came apart very quick. However, Tempo Storm staying four strong. They're now going again at Envious. They got the line of sight on it. Shot goes a little bit wide, but they're wanting to play around this hillside. They want to get a control of so many areas, and you can see that they have so many nice shots. Valiate still just being quiet. Praying the guys from Totality run past him. They are going to make a different approach angle onto it. So really, we've got Totality that's caught between two solo players. They don't want to take the shot unless they absolutely have to. Meanwhile, Gates is just on the other side of this. So if at any given point this does go loud, so many squads are just going to spin and come back on Totality. They have to get these downs. They have to get control over this side of the circle. Lots of pressure from them. This is actually turned in their favor. AT is on their flank. Tempo Storm coming further and further down the hill. You have to wonder if Tempo wants to push this. They have the line of sight, but do they have 
uh, I guess, the wherewithal to just kind of push through this open area. AT is right there, however, but he, again, playing from placement. We've to seen this from them in the past. Totality can't give up their position. They know where Envy is. So if they go for a, start, a hard push off to the side of that, they're going to surrender a nice, easy transition point for Envy. So new circle pops right on the edge. We have Envy, Tempo Storms inside of it. Now those guys that are on the western side, they need to make their way a hard push through Ooh. here. Grenade comes out, right connects on the Valiate. That's going to hurt. He's got to figure out how he wants to play this. You know he doesn't want to go for the meds. He thinks that he has to hit the shot. Is the next nade going to come up and active? No, it's going to go He's off full distance. To it. I don't know. Oh, he's been spotted again, waiting just a little bit too long, hoping that they looked him over. Totality now rolling with 12 kills, picking up momentum. And this is now looking more and more like Totality is going to be looking at Tempo Storm. Team Gate still holding the high ground above them, but now they have to make the trek into the zone. We've seen them have trouble with this in the past. They take these fights, they try and finish them, but they lose a little bit too much time. They are spotted by Tempo Storm. Shots are now coming through. Totality's trying to figure out how they want to play around this. They have to run right into the waiting arms of two different squads that are holding position. Meanwhile, we've got gates that are going to be on the top of this. You can see that they're separating out. If they make this push, they're going to be running right next to Methods AT, who is still alive somehow. Bullets are just whizzing all around him. Totality. Gates just has, they're under luck. Totality yeah. has so much they, control they're waiting. right now. They're waiting too long. Totality is just spending a little bit too much time on the edge of the zone. AT again finding himself trailing a team into the current play zone. Team Gates have Having moved onto that high ground spot, I don't think Totality is able to even take that fight. They're going to have to skirt around, but or just take it right to them. Really, that's the only option left. They just feel like they have to hard push this. Meanwhile, you can see Tempo Storm. Here's everything that's happening around on this. There's no angle for it, though. Cars going off in the distance. Mozzie gets dropped, but we've got Mortify that did manage to make it into the Dacia, but he's going to be running right back over to where Tempo Storm's at. He gets dropped as he's going through there. Team Gates playing the position, but the position does not work out for them as the kills come quick and easy for them. Now it's going to be Tempo Storm and Envious, who's been quiet through the last couple of minutes of this game. The utility comes out immediately, just a little bit too late. However, Dre taken down by Caden. Envious again in the end game, looking to try and take this in this three-way team fight. Well, we still have AT back there. There's still a four, man. Well, Look at him. He's chilling out. It's a team fight, not snake fight. Hey, he could pop up <laughs> at any given moment because he has a beautiful positioning right now on Tempo Storm. He essentially sees oh all Oh, my three. God! Look at this. He's just running right back. Saw behind snake, him and they is that don't you? See him. Everybody else is sitting here playing oh, PUBG and Battle Royale. Now's the time, He's AT. playing espionage games. AT, we've been here before, my friend. Now is the time. Pop up. They're all grouped up. AT, please. Come on. Uh, I mean, for totality, this is now turning into an issue, but AC has all of Tempo Storm right in front of him. Here, Here comes the no smoke, smoke grenade. No, uh. don't throw a smoke grenade. That's just going to give away your position. Sharp shot does go down from Envy, so you can uh. see that now the shots are starting to come through. I don't know if he saw that. I think he can see somebody's down on that. If we see Zampa go for this res, maybe that's the time to strike. He does have the grenade. Going to line it up, take his time. Waiting for the throw res. It. Waiting for Is the it res. Is it going to connect? Oh! Yes, it does! AC coming up strong now. Now it's all onto just Maluk. That was a very patient play. AC has had this bite him in the past, but now it's going a little bit differently. A nice throw by him. Maluk is right in front of him. AC is playing this all on his back as the solo player. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Will the solo player be able to pull this out? AC is just biding his time at this moment. You can see that Maluk is playing off of this. He doesn't know exactly where it is. Do it! Does AC take the shot? He doesn't know how many people are around him. Ugh. He knows it's five, so that means it's at least four other people up and active. We only have three squads, two yeah. solos, and with that, AC secures himself second place. But now look, Envy comes alive. They heard the shots. They know where the fight's happening at. Now AC gets in control position. He's just got to find the information. Wow, so AT now, the tides have turned again, following Tempo Storm. So close, he could reach out and slap him on the behind there, and now it's going to be a 3v1 situation. However, Envy has all the information. They have the zone. AT again uh, for Envy, oh, finding themselves it? in this is a situation. No, okay, so we got a couple of pot shots going through. It's going to give AT a little bit of point to look at. The blue is now starting to come up back behind yeah, him. He's got to be very, very careful. Yep. Yep, he's going to die the zone <laughs> at this point. So with that, we see Envy getting another win. So for Envious, having held on to control of the zone for so long, only with two kills this time around, but again, securing a win. Really, the story there was AC. All the patience, more patience than Five I had. Kills. More patience, Five more kills. patience than I had. I know you were sitting there, do it, do it. You could see he was playing patient. He was just playing for it, and he so performed there at the end. All right. So after that finish, an amazing finish. I'm interested to hear what Frankie and the crew has to say. Frankie, take it away.
Well, I sound like I'm going to pee on your bonfire now because congratulations to Envy with another chicken dinner but two kills. I kind of feel disappointed because, boys, you did so well oh. with the 20-kill round before this one. But we have to talk about that final moment between the boys from Envy and 8C from Method. I mean, uh, Envy and, 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 and Method, I don't think that's the big story. I think the big story was that 8C was able to stay behind, <laughs> wait for Totality to die, and throw that nade onto Templestorm, which completely wrecked them. Oh, and also, yeah. fini yeah. also finish on all of Templestorm. Like, hey, you're going to tell me two games, two wins in a row from Envy, <laughs> two third place in a row from Tempo, but the big story is 8C. I mean, they, yeah, come on. I think like, it's pretty, pretty well, big. It is, it is kind of funny because that's two games in a row now that, that Tempo, Storm, and 8C have been like right next to each other. And Tempo just has, I, I don't know if he's just not visible on Tempo's screen or what? I don't know what the deal is Maybe there. Maybe they're flirting with each other. Maybe. They're seeing a little love story happen. It could it's like be. the Romeo and Juliet, EU and He's trying to join the squad. He's trying to join the squad. <laughs> He wants, to leave his, he wants to leave his other squad. I think mean, five players is not a mode in PUBG, but maybe we could see it happen. A little all-stars tournament. It could happen, it could. Maybe. maybe. It could happen. But, I mean, AC, how many times is he going to be left on his own? I don't know. I mean, uh, being able to snake that was super important for him. Also, last time he got... Uh, what did he get last round? He got... It was also somewhat high. Yeah, like, I think they got up to ninth. Yeah, top so 10. still in a good position compared to how bad the, and this, the round was. Well, considering that, you know, that's also two rounds in a row now where Andy has kind of died early by going off on his own. Uh, you know, Method still managing to maintain and still get, I mean, they're kind of low kills. Um, I mean, they managed to get seven this time, which is decent for being a solo player. Yeah. But, you know, they, I want to see them get together. You know, I want to see yeah. them make it four players to the end of the round. Well, Andy needs to stay alive. Let's put it like that. Now, Mustache Dave is over with the boys from Envy.